everybody. You're watching Moving Families Forward with Williams Law Group. I am Allison Williams, the owner and founder of Williams Law Group, and I want to thank you for tuning in this week. We have a great show for you tonight with one of our favorite guests, who is also uh, the spouse of one of our attorneys here at Williams Law Group, Dr. Ron Israeli, who I'm going to give a full intro to in just a moment. Uh, but I'm so happy that you're here and that you're watching with us tonight because for those of you that haven't seen the show before, we really are trying to make this into a movement. The, the show came about as an idea to help the local community as well as people that are our Facebook followers and friends of the firm really get a resource that can help them to have a more positive experience of the family law issues that we encounter. So we know that a lot of what we do at this firm is helping people with divorce or post-divorce matters. And a lot of times people are really struggling with how to deal with uh, their spouse, how to deal with their family, their family reconstitution. They see it as a destructive process. You know, they started with a family and they walked out with half of their family kind of torn apart. And we don't really like to think of it that way. We really want to help people reconceptualize the way that we look at divorce because it's an opportunity for you to have a new experience in your own world with your own rules, your own values, your own choices. And it gives you a whole new outlook on life when you get to see it as a positive experience or at least a net neutral. It doesn't have to be this God awful thing that we all suffer through. So with that, uh, one of the things that we have had the beauty of here at this law firm is working with a lot of different great providers of services and products even uh, that help our clients move forward have a healthier experience of life, have a healthier experience of relationships. And in the course of doing that, uh, we have encountered people like the great Dr. Ron Israeli. So uh, without further ado, I am just going to share the live uh, and just want to see that it is on. Make sure that we got it here. Ah, yes, there we are. Um, so I've shared the live now and um, Dr. Israeli, welcome to the show. Thank you. So for those of you that don't know uh, Dr. Ron Israeli, uh, I want to let you know a little bit about him. He has quite an impressive resume, so we're very lucky to have him. Uh, he is a board certified urologist as well as a fellowship trained expert uh, in urologic oncology, having gained his credentials at the one and only Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center, the State of New York, uh, State University of New York Health Sciences Center, at Stony Brook and at John Hopkins University. He's been personally involved in HIFU therapy for over 10 years and having treated patients in Germany, Canada, and of course the US, as well as the Caribbean. So he's had over 25 years of experience in urological surgery, prostate cancer treatment, research, and comprehensive understanding uh, in the field, which is of course informing what he does now, uh, which is in addition to having his own private practice, he has a company, Ahava, which means love in Hebrew, uh, which is a medispa. And so he doesn't just deal with medical issues. He also helps people revitalize themselves as people. So he has a very holistic approach to uh, the way in which he helps patients with the issues that we're going to talk about tonight. So Dr. Israeli, thank you. Thank you so much for being here with us. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thanks for inviting me. I think we're going to have a lot of interesting topics tonight. I agree. I agree. So I'm going to go ahead and just put that disclaimer out there. So for anybody that is tuning in with us today, uh, please do know that uh, the topics that we're going to be talking about are sexual in nature. So if you have any uh, teens, preteens, they probably know more about this stuff than you do. Uh, <laughs> but if you have any kids younger than that, you might want to seek with them from the room uh, so that uh, you know they don't hear anything that you might not want them to hear. So got that out of the way. Um, All right. Dr. Israeli, why don't we start with this issue about uh, sexual health? Uh, and uh, one of the things that we know causes a rift in marriages is, is when people are either not sexually compatible or where sexual dysfunction creeps into either of the partners. And it's one of those things that becomes difficult for them to deal with. So how common is sexual dysfunction in men and women? Yeah, it's increasing in, in its prevalence it's very common and it's starting at a young age there are all kinds of reasons for it young men come and see me occasionally in their 20s and 30s and i check their blood and i find they have a low testosterone or they work out at the gym and they look great but they have taken some steroids or done some other things so here it's starting even at a young age their sexual function is impaired 
medications can impair both a man and a woman's uh, sexual function. A woman, of course, like a man, can have a hormone imbalance, particularly women in their 40s, 50s, as they're getting near menopause or beyond it, and having an imbalance in their various hormones in the body will affect their mood, their sexual function, their libido for sure. Uh, these are just touching the surface, so it's extremely common, but in almost all cases, extremely treatable. And there used to be such a stigma uh, associated with it, people would be embarrassed, but sometimes people come in and I get embarrassed with what they tell me, so it, it's pretty, the, t the tables have turned and it's, okay. it's, it's become different. Yeah, definitely. So um, when you start to see these sorts of issues, um, I would imagine it's, it's difficult for people to talk about. And when they come to you, they're, they're oftentimes, I'm sure, in a great deal of distress. How do you help them to be able to have a candid conversation with you about it? Well, I'm not a white coat sort of guy. I, first of all, I try to let them relax. You know, they get a cup of coffee, sit down. And we talk, you know, I'm not Dr. Israeli, I'm Dr. Ron. And I have to be part cheerleader part uh, spiritual leader and, of course, part magician. But um, my idea is to wave my magic wand and fix theirs. <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, I, I, I make jokes. Urologists, we're known for our jokes. And if you can't joke about things, uh, it becomes just too serious. So, first of all, I want them to speak freely. And, um, you know, if they're more comfortable speaking at times, during the exam, certain questions I might ask when I'm examining a man or a woman not in the presence of their spouse so that they may feel that they can mention something that they might be afraid of or embarrassed to say, even in front of a spouse. But I try to sort of gauge what, what is important and how to get the information out so that there's, there's no stigma, but just let's, let's, get to the, let's get to the problem and see what I can do to help. Yeah. So I can already tell that you have a great bedside manner and you're right that, you know, if people aren't able to have a conversation with you, that's, that's open and free, I would imagine, you know, there's a lot that you really can't help them uh, to accomplish. So I want to turn a little bit now to what happens when the family expands. So a couple has come to you, you've helped them through um, having some form of sexual dysfunction in one or both of the parties. And now it's time to have one and two plus three makes a family, right? Baby. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if a couple is having difficulty um, reproducing, um, having having a child, how do you get involved to help them? What are some of the things that you would commonly do to help a family in that situation? Okay, so infertility is actually increasing. Um, the latest statistics show that we're at a historic low in this country with respect to fertility. Of every thousand women who are childbearing, age, there are only 60 births. So what's happened is a lot of women are postponing children until their careers are developed and they're not getting started until uh, they're, they're older. 20% of uh, mothers are having their first baby after the age of 35. Mm -hmm. And so once again, the longer you go, the older you are, the more likely there is to be fertility issues. So the first thing is we have to determine is the problem on the male side or the female side. Um, about 30% of cases are male in nature. So there's a problem with the uh, sperm count or the sperm, they just aren't good swimmers or something related to the male. 70% of the time it's on the female side. Either there's an ovulation problem, there's a hormonal problem, something on that side. So problem, uh, you know, step one is determine where the problem lies. And so the woman typically sees her a GYN or a fertility specialist, and the male sees a urologist like myself. And we do our basic workup. Once we've identified where the problem lies, we can really target and see how, what, what needs to be done. It could be as simple as just they're timing it wrong. You know, infertility is basically defined as unprotect, unprotected intercourse with the intention of having a child for uh, a year or greater unsuccessfully. After a year, and you've really tried and you've had sex during that appropriate period of the month and you're not getting pregnant, then it's time to seek help. So um, narrowing it down, yeah. That's a, that's a broad definition because if you think about it, you know, if somebody has already delayed uh, the, the, the start of the family to the mid thirties, um, ovulation has already started to decrease. And so now you're going to have 
uh, fertility rather has already started to decrease. So now you're going to have even greater difficulty and you're saying you're not considered infertile until you've been trying for a year. Um, do you ever have people that come in and say, you know, listen, you know, I want to run a test. I want to make sure that I'm OK before I even you know, wait that year because it's just going to make it that much harder when we actually get to the specialist. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's on the male side. It's very simple. We send them to the uh, laboratory. They they uh, collect uh, their sample for semen analysis. We check that. If that semen analysis is okay and the male's hormone levels are okay and his, physically he's okay, well, he gets my seal of approval. And then it's really we have to evaluate, have the woman evaluate. But no, we don't have to wait for. They're entitled and certainly can have it done at any point. Um, but, the, you know, to define it as really truly infertility, it's the books say one year. <laughs> Understood. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this, this this idea of when it's the right time to start a family is a difficult, um, is a difficult decision because sometimes people are not necessarily on the same page as to when is the right time. And, uh, you know, it's kind of like, you know, when is the right time to have a root canal, you know? You know, there really is no right time. It's one of those things like you just do it because, you know, you're ready to, you know, you know, kind of go through those struggles to get to that joy of having the family. Um, so I'm sure you see a lot of that. But one of the other things I'm sure you also see a lot of is where people are having difficulty with their libido. And um, we we have a lot of we've heard we hear a lot of those stories in, in family law where people come in and say, you know, there's just a, an incompatibility now, not because I desire my spouse any less, but because, you know, I'm tired. You know, I've got the kids. I've got my job. I've got my elderly parents. I've got um, social activities. I've got a lot of things on my plate and I'm just tired. And if somebody comes in and reports to you that their energy is impacting their desire or um, interest or time available for sex and they've just lost interest, how do you get involved as a medical professional who... You know, it's not necessarily a mental health issue, so it might be medical, but it also could just be a, a stage of life. Well, when you say a stage of life, I think what that stage is is the decline in various hormone levels leads, is part of that stage of life. And it's not necessarily something that we have to live with, uh, with um, hormone rebalancing, so-called uh, bioidentical hormone replacement, which means adding hormones, natural hormones, not synthetic, to get your body back to where it should be and replacing them, we can bring, give you more energy, make you feel like you're 10, 15 years younger, uh, improve your libido. The worst thing is when I see um, a man or a woman, but not the spouse. And I have many times seen this where, okay, so either the man or the woman comes in and I fix them and now they're rare and ready to go, but the spouse is not. Now you have an issue. Uh, the same way that, you know, all, uh, with erectile dysfunction, you know, it wasn't until 15 years ago when uh, Viagra came out. And now this little magic blue pill, you know, an 80 year old can stand up like a flagpole, but the wife might not really like flagpoles anymore. So, <laughs> you know, um, we have a situation where I love to treat couples because, you know, especially if yeah, I fix the man and I fix the woman, you, you're just you're, you're making them a young couple again. And they feel young, they have more energy, they sleep better, their sexual life improves. Uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, medical data that shows that a healthy and active sex life uh, leads to a longer longevity as well. Mm -hmm. So um, couples are, are great to treat together. And uh, uh, sometimes I treat one and then they run home and say, get your ass in here and, you know, <laughs> you fix yourself too. But I mean, it's all good. It's all good. But ideally, if, if, if they're, if it's a 60, 50 year old couple, it's likely that both could use a little, a little help, a little jump start. A little jump start. I like that. And of course, I did not know that you were going to have visual aids in this presentation. <laughs> so I did not know that we were going to have the packets of Viagra showing up. So yeah. I'm you know, thank you for being zealously prepared. You know. Oh, no problem. Always keep a handy Viagra. You know, you never know. <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's interesting that you talk about this idea of having the couples come together because, you know, you're right. You know, if you if you go revving up the 50 year old and he's you know now spry as a 20 year old and the 50 year old wife is like, you know, leave me alone. <laughs> I'm just right. I don't have time for that. Or, you know, it's not yeah. my interest. That could be a real problem. 
Um, and I would imagine that in given what you do, that if you don't advise your patient uh, to get their spouse on the same page with whatever the treatment is, it may be less effective. That's true. That's true. It, it leads to frustration. It's not as effective. Um, it, it's nice to be, but it's also nice when, when I correct one and if the other one is, if the other partner is okay, but I, I really can help uh, rekindle relationships. I recently had a, a man uh, getting married for the second time and he did, he had erectile dysfunction. He came in, he was going back to his native country in Africa to marry a family arranged uh, a bride 30 years younger. He was very excited, of course. And he said, look, I, I'm going back to get married in eight weeks. You have eight weeks to fix me. The clock starts now. So, you know, uh, I worked. We like deadlines. I, yeah, I had an, another couple that came in. They were an adorable couple. They were getting married in six to eight weeks and even told me, you know, when their honeymoon dates are. And that's it. That's I had uh, work dates to work with. Get us working by then. But um, it's very, very satisfying when you can really make the ultimate difference in these people's lives. And, you know, many of these people I see, they're in chapter two, they've gotten divorced, they want to have a new life and a new look on life. And they want to, maybe they didn't have a, a sex life for a decade with their ex because of a poor relationship. And maybe things have sort of, they've, they've almost forgotten what's going on. And I, I, I kind of can reintroduce them, get get them thinking the right way and working the right way. So with what we have in medicine today, we can do some pretty pretty amazing things. Uh, I do work with stem cells to help uh, improve function. I do work with platelet-rich plasma, which we take a patient's blood and isolate the platelets, which are the cells containing all their growth factors. And injecting that into the penis is, is, is called the P-shot. It helps the male uh, healing of the uh, male uh, you know, uh, the organ, the penis. In females, there's the O shot, the orgasm shot. It happens to help also with leakage, with coughing and sneezing, but rejuvenates them. There are th treatments today to uh, tighten things for a woman down there that can be done in the office and it feels like a massage almost. Uh, amazing therapies are out there, almost anything. Female sexual dysfunction, uh, up to 20% of women have never had an orgasm. There are, there are even drugs now, flibanserin, sorry, tongue twister. Uh, there are others, even Viagra, for certain women that are on uh, antidepressants called SSRIs, Viagra has been shown to help improve. There's a friend of mine made a product where he ground up some Viagra in cold cream and he called it dream cream. And they would, <laughs> they would rub it on the appropriate place and swore they had the best orgasms ever. So uh, there is a lot we could do and uh, people just need not to be afraid to ask. Oh, wow. So there was a lot there. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you so much for sharing all that. So I have a lot of follow-up questions about that. Um, Before I do, I want to thank uh, those of us that are, those of our audience that are here. Uh, I want to acknowledge we have quite a few people that are friends of the firm uh, here. Of course, we have our wonderful April Katz Israeli. Uh, no big surprise there that as a supportive spouse, she's here. Um, but we also have our wonderful office administrator, Judy Satardi, a uh, friend of the firm, Christine Mattis, who's a matrimonial, pardon me, who's a special needs attorney who we had on the show not that long ago. So thank you, Christine, for being here. Uh, and I see we have uh, some uh, fellow colleagues in the profession watching as well, Dina Cristiano. Uh, and uh, we also have uh, Victoria Miranda of our firm. So we have a lot of great people that are here looking forward to some interesting information. And for those of you that are just tuning in, you are watching Moving Families Forward with Williams Law Group. I am Allison Williams, the owner and founder of Williams Law Group. And we're talking tonight to Dr. Ron Israeli, who is a board certified urologist, as well as a uh, healer of all things sexual. I think that's going to be your new nickname. Uh, oh, wow. You came with your own Viagra to my show. I just feel so special that you did. Oh, that. my goodness. <laughs> well, that's a good, it's great on Halloween for trick or treat, you know, but not for the kids. <laughs> I was going to say, I hope you're not putting that in, in the lieu of well, Snickers and, and Reese's Pieces. No, no, but they do call it trick or treat. You know, you got to think about that. Well, I think you want both on Halloween if you're bringing Viagra, but you know, yeah. that's, well, that's, happened, that's, right? that's for the mommies and daddies. <laughs> there you go. So you mentioned a lot of different um, treatments, a lot of different therapies that are out there. SSRIs I'd always associated with depression. And that's one of the common ways that we treat depression. But you said that that actually can be something that would well, help with. Uh, no, no. Uh, people that are on SSRIs and have uh, women that uh, particularly that have uh, 
orgasmic dysfunction or lack of orgasms can be treated with Viagra. It works in ah. that category. But we do use antidepressants um, in certain cases. For example, one of the most underdiagnosed uh, conditions in men is premature ejaculation. It's not the kind of thing guys brag about in the locker room. Hey, I got <laughs> You know, I was with my wife last night, and I came in 30 seconds, <laughs> high five, you know. That's, it's, it's not like a sprint by, uh, you know, somebody. But uh, up to 70% of men are reportedly suffering in some degree from premature ejaculation, and it's defined as uh, reach a male reaching climax in less than two minutes. Now, obviously, a lot of women might not reach orgasm in two minutes, and so you're left with one unhappy uh, partner. Well... Antidepressants like Prozac and Zoloft, uh, one of the early side effects that were shown was not only did people cheer up, but their sex life improved. All of a sudden, I remember I was a fellow and a friend of mine called me and she said, the weirdest thing, you know, my husband, he's been depressed and he started taking Prozac and all of a sudden he lasts for a half an hour. I can't believe it, <laughs> you know, so, and then studies were done. And so these drugs can the way drugs sometimes, you know, aspirin can be used for a headache, but also to thin your blood and so on and so on. Antidepressants can be used for that. So there are a lot of different medications and things that we, we, we are able to use now. Yeah. And so for anyone that's just stopping in, one of the things that I do want to highlight is that the reason why I think it's so great that we have Dr. Israeli on the show is the fact that this is something that is at the heart of a healthy marital relationship. So whether you are ending your first relationship and thinking about what your future is going to hold, if you move forward, if this is something that you're dealing with in your personal life that maybe you didn't deal with with your spouse because the marriage was going downhill, it wasn't something that you wanted to pursue, but now you're looking at the future and what you want to do to become a more vibrant, healthy individual. Uh, it is correlated that you, uh, as Dr. Israeli said, that you have a healthy sex life, you're more likely to have um, longevity in life as well as health. Uh, and those are one of the things that we're very uh, centered on here is helping people to be healthier, happier individuals for themselves as well as for their families. So. Definitely great stuff, uh, great information that Dr. Israeli is sharing with us. So now I want to turn a little bit to this idea about um, what happens, I think, in, in most middle-aged people. And I hate to use middle-aged because my number, my age now starts with a four. Uh, so I'm in that category. And I know that this is something that uh, I am seeing in my own life. Uh, weight gain is a lot easier now. Uh, things do get easier with life. Unfortunately, weight gain is one of them. And so if you have partners that are coming to a relationship and uh, or coming to the middle of their life, you know, they're they're in their 40s, their 50s, maybe in their 60s and, and weight is starting to pile on one of the parties. I know that that affects not only their self-esteem, but also their physical health and their vitality. And if you have that in one of the parties and it starts to cause depression or um, an impact on how they view themselves, their relationship, how do you become involved with a with a couple like that in order to help them? Uh, be more satisfied sexually with each other? I think, again, you have to look to the root of the problem. Um, is it the chicken or the egg? Uh, when you see someone that in middle age has started to gain weight, check their blood sugar, check their hemoglobin A1C. Do they have prediabetes? Diabetes affects sexual function, particularly in the male, the erections. So is that developing or is the weight gain going to lead to that? is the weight gain because the testosterone level is low, which is so incredibly common in men. And if it is, you can correct it. And if you correct it, they can lose weight and their erections can improve and their libido can improve and they'll get more energy. So they'll be more willing to work out and so on and so on. It's, it's really a, uh, it's all interrelated, all these problems and the same in, in females. So uh, females that are, uh, have most females, many women don't realize that, they have testosterone. They say, well, that's a male hormone. I don't want hair on my face or whatever. But testosterone is critically important in women. And a low testosterone will lead to a low libido. So mm -hmm. we're correcting and giving women testosterone all the time in addition to perhaps estrogen and progesterone if that's what they need. But it, it's a simple blood test to check and see what's going on. And the weight gain can, it becomes harder, like you said, to lose weight in middle age. But a lot of times that's because you're, people are fighting against this hormone imbalance, the body is no longer an efficient machine. And maybe their thyroid is a little sluggish. We always check their thyroid levels. If the, thi the thyroid is like the, the 
thermostat of the body, if you will. And if it's not set properly, it's just you're going to be, you'll try to diet and you will not succeed. And you're going to get more and more depressed, more and more anxious, more and more irritable. It's, it's just not good for a relationship or for an individual. So getting checked out is, is critical. Yeah, definitely. And you mentioned earlier, you're talking about hormone imbalances. You mentioned earlier um, the difference between synthetic and um, natural hormones. Can you can you talk to us a little bit about how you use, if if both of them, how you use both of them, and really what are the distinctions in terms of helping with this um, area of health? Yeah, I think the, the latest and the most popular way uh, to correct hormone imbalances of this kind in men and women is using uh, pellets. Most people, men don't like giving themselves a testosterone shot twice a week. It's painful. You have to be on time. You have to remember to have the stuff. You have to sp save the needles. You can't discard them. And women, again, patches and creams, it becomes very much like uh, you have to become a chemist. Now what we do is we check the levels. We calculate exactly what a person needs. And I numb up a tiny little area uh, the size of uh, smaller than a pea. On the butt, on the buttocks, and we make a tiny nick and pop these pellets in the butt, and they're good for four or five months. So your level remains perfect, you feel great, and you're not tied to medications. And that's really uh, th these are plant derived um, hormones that are completely natural, identical to the testosterone or the est or the estrogen that uh, you would have in your body. They do not. For, uh, lead to cancer, whereas some some pe people have heard that certain estrogens that are synthetic could lead to breast cancer or increase the the, the likelihood. These are all safe, and it's um, an incredibly effective way of treating it. It's convenient, and uh, I do that all the time. I do have couples come in where I pop a couple of pellets in each of them, and <laughs> there, there they go, fountain of youth. There you go. And I would imagine getting the smack on the tush when you know that that's really invigorating that hormone is going to be something that's, that's going to work well for your relationship as well. So, um, you know, talking about uh, talking about um, some of the therapies you mentioned earlier, you mentioned stem cells. And I'm really curious to know how you use stem cell therapy in the course of treating a couple that may be dealing with um, hormone imbalances or or any type of really sexual dysfunction. Well, the stem cells are, are these sort of magic cells. Everybody's heard of stem cells, and most people think that, you know, they're these magic bullets, which they really are. Stem cells can heal any type of tissue, whether it be uh, muscle tissue, kidneys, uh, wherever you, wherever the stem cell acts, uh, it can incorporate and integrate into that, that type of area. So, for example, in men with erectile dysfunction, there's a problem with the blood vessels, perhaps a problem with the nerve conduction uh, and so forth. Uh, there are ways of we can harvest stem cells. Fat is rich in stem cells and stem cells are also harvested from the placenta. But uh, the stem cell itself isn't what's doing the work. The stem cell is the vehicle and it carries with it a little toolbox and that toolbox is called an exosome. And I actually uh, have, there is one company in the country that sells these exosomes and in a little tiny tube of uh, two mls there are the products of 14 million stem cells and wow. i inject i inject that into the penis or i can inject that into a woman's clitoris and uh anterior vagina and it will rejuvenate it will lead to vigorous healing and new blood vessel formation and new nerve formation and and just totally change the landscape and really turn the clock back and this is painless, it is quick, it is simple. It's not the cheapest thing in the world, but it's not the most expensive, but it can really uh, just turn a situation that was thought to be hopeless into a really great one. Yeah, well, when you talk about cheap versus expensive, you're really talking about you know the value that you would place on something like revitalizing your health and revitalizing your relationship. And I think for many people that really is priceless. Yeah, it is. And one thing that people don't realize, um, there have been many, many papers that have looked at erectile dysfunction, for example, and said when a young man gets erectile dysfunction, one of the things to worry about is do they have heart disease? We know that the, the blood vessels in the body can get blocked up and clogged up with cholesterol, but the arteries in the penis, for example, are very thin, very fine arteries, uh, unlike the ones to the heart. So if, if there's 
a problem in the heart, you can almost guarantee they're going to have a problem down below. So down below might be like a barometer and say, hey, if you're having problems down there, maybe you should go and get a stress test yeah. uh, and so forth. So it's really important. Bad, bad um, um, teeth, bad dental health is correlated with erectile dysfunction. So, you know, guys, brush your teeth tonight, please. <laughs> Very important. Well, I would imagine that if your teeth aren't that clean, you're going to have problems, you know, <laughs> performing because nobody's going to want to perform with you. That's exactly right. Yes. There's, there's lots of bad, <laughs> lots of good reasons to brush your teeth. Yeah. So did, I, I'm curious now, you know, this is kind of a little off the, off the topic, but it's related. You know, do people come to you directly? They say, you know, I've got a problem with X, Y, and Z, and I know I need a urologist. Or are you getting a lot of referrals from primary care physicians? I think the majority of my, uh, a majority of people self-refer these days. So uh, the internet is incredibly potent in terms of, you can pretty much diagnose yourself and even read how to do your own operation. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. I mean, you know, terrorists can figure out how to make a bomb. You could print a 3D print a gun, and you can probably take out a kidney if you read the internet. But uh, <laughs> most most I of my patients. Try that one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I recommend only your urologist. But uh, <laughs> but but people self refer. Uh, you know, um, they they read they read something. They see uh, my website. They see another doctor's website, and they come in pretty knowledgeable. Most people are very knowledgeable these days, and. Um, they come in, there's one treatment, a new treatment that was the first in New Jersey to perform, uh, and, and that is using shock waves to treat uh, erectile dysfunction. And uh, there's a special machine, it delivers these, the shock waves are used to break up kidney stones, those are high intensity. Low intensity shock waves, because you can't hit the penis with high intensity, because you, you want to fix it, not knock it off. But uh, <laughs> Low intensity shock waves. I don't know. Actually, some of my clients probably do want to knock it off. That's how well, those are. The, those off. are the wives you represent, Allison. But, uh, <laughs> um, but uh, you know, we use shock wave uh, uh, treatments uh, uh, twice a week. They take ten minutes for three weeks. Incredibly effective in treating erectile dysfunction. And there are now trials being done, and people are using it to treat female sexual dysfunction as well to rejuvenate things there what these shock waves do is stimulate the release of growth factors and then the magic stem cells get attracted to that area and leads to repair so there's a lot of common themes in medicine that have to do with repair of of tissue from using you know all these growth factors both the ones in our body and ones we can introduce wow Wow. So that is very, very helpful information, uh, Dr. Israeli. And I want to thank you for sharing that with our audience. Uh, we have some new people that have joined uh, the show since uh, you've been sharing this great information with us. We've got Anna Shea of our firm. Uh, we also have Dr. Carla Cook, a psychologist. So I want to thank them both for stopping in. And for those of you that are just arriving, uh, I do want to remind you that you are watching Moving Families Forward with Williams Law Group. I am Allison Williams, the owner and founder of Williams Law Group. And tonight's guest is Dr. Ron Israeli, who is a board certified urologist, who also has a specialty, specialty with uh, urologic cancer oncology. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so the treatment of cancer uh, in that area. And he also uh, was trained at uh, Memorial Sloan Kettering. Um, so uh, knowing that uh, certainly credentials not being everything, but it's a very uh, prestigious uh, organization. And so we know that Dr. Israeli has credentials uh, but he also has a great bedside manner, and he's been sharing with us some of his dazzling personality uh, as we've been talking <laughs> about a relatively sensitive area, but an area that I think will obviously help uh, anyone who needs to learn about different ways that you can revitalize your sex life so that you can have a healthier relationship, uh, either your current relationship if you want to make sure that it stays stable, stable or uh, if you're moving on to the next relationship, what you're going to do in Act 2 of your life uh, to keep yourself young and happy and healthy and vital. So with that, doctor, I want to turn now to one of our favorite topics here in the office, sex. And I know that my office administrator is watching, so I know she's probably going to send me a nasty gram because I said that uh, out there. But, you know, we, we joke in this office because, you know, you have to laugh to keep from crying. You know, we help people with a lot of very sensitive issues. And sometimes uh, we get some potty mouth going on. And we talk about uh, some of the things that our clients report to us. And we know that sometimes people fall apart emotionally because their sex life is just not good, right? It wanes mm -hmm. over time, you know, it gets boring. 
um, maybe one party is, is having erectile dysfunction or vaginal dryness or whatever is causing a problem physically, and the parties just aren't dealing with it. So when you know that sex is not good for one of the parties, when somebody reports that to you, what is it that you do to help them to get that spark back so that their relationship can actually be strong and stable? Well, the spark is something I, I can I, I can give the tools. I can't provide the spark. I don't think my wife would let me do that. But, <laughs> um, but I get the tools working. I get the tools lubricated, humming, and spinning at maximum RPM. Um, but like you said, it's sometimes it's it's not always cut and dry. It's not always one partner. Um, you have you really need to not just functioning, but also on the same wavelength. So. A woman may confide in the exam room. Again, it's sometimes good to get them. She may tell me, you know, he um, he just, um, I'm, I'm just, I have pain. I don't want to tell him that it hurts, but it really hurts. Uh, or, you know, he doesn't understand that I, I'm, I'm, I'm dry. Or he's too big and I just, it's, I can't, and I'm not as, um, as, uh, lubricated and my vagina just can't seem, it just doesn't, work the same way as when we first met. And so there's a lot of embarrassment. She feels inadequate. She can no longer uh, satisfy him. She can no longer, she's not interested in sex because she's in pain. And that's something that can be helped, of course. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, a lot of men, they're embarrassed because their erection, they get an erection, they get started, and then they lose it. And they're embarrassed and they're upset because they know that she's not being satisfied and they're many of them are terrified that they're going to lose their spouse. She's going to find another man because they can no longer satisfy her. Again, sometimes they will not verbalize these things uh, in front of their spouses. Some, some, there's different people. Some are very open, but there are so many stigmas and so much, uh, you know, oh, I, not to stereotype, but older Italian men, they would never talk about this stuff in front of their traditional Italian wives, but they'll confide in me quietly and vice versa. People are very, many people are very traditional, very, and then yeah, people that, you know, today's generation is, you know, they're the, putting it on social media before it happens. Uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, they're, they're sexting uh, whatever, you know, so, but uh, I think it's really important to make sure that, you're not just supercharging one partner, but you have to address it as a team um, because otherwise there's going to be one unhappy partner. And, and that's not the goal. The goal isn't to make uh, the guy into the energizer bunny without the wife being ready to accommodate that. <laughs> okay. That's very true. I mean, I would imagine that if you had one partner that's raring to go and you, you fix everything and now all cylinders are firing and the other one says, I want to sit down and have a, a V8, that's going to be a problem. Uh, yeah. you know, yeah. And that's certainly where we find some of our clients. <laughs> but yeah. luckily not me. Um, I will acknowledge that even though sexual problems do arise and many people ultimately fall away, what normally happens that when, by the time our clients come to us is that the the lack of sexual intimacy in the relationship has caused an emotional rift. And the emotional rift is what then slowly has us draw apart from each other until the relationship has uh, run its course. So hopefully by someone seeing a doctor like you, uh, they would be able to avoid that because they're honest about the nature of their problems and they're willing to address them. Yeah. And, uh, you know, today we see all kinds. I, I have plenty of, uh, uh, gay couples that come to me uh, with this problem. It's and heterosexual couples. There's no, there are no boundaries. There's no, there are different ethnic uh, views on sex and 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 different ways of dealing with it. Um, I have found again not to stereotype, but sometimes there there are problems that a man has where he gets fine, his erections are fine, and he has. There are three. I mean, just to take a step backwards, the male sexual response. There are really three separate components and each one can exist independently of the other so erection is through one set of nerves ejaculation making the mess that's another set of nerves and orgasm the sense of pleasure that's a whole separate so someone who has a spinal cord injury and can't get an erection can still have an orgasm the sense of pleasure for example or someone that's had prostate cancer surgery if the nerves are spirit, they can get an erection, 
they're not going to ejaculate because the prostate makes semen and they have no more prostate. Mm -hmm. So they don't make a mess, but they could still get an orgasm. So what I was starting to say, culturally, for example, I've seen the some cultures, they if a man has a problem and doesn't ejaculate or has very little fluid, which can, can be caused by some medicines as simple as Propecia, which some men use to grow hair, mm -hmm. uh, can decrease the semen volume. That's a sign of virility in some cultures. And I've noticed a lot of the Spanish cultures, the men, the first thing they think of is, that, God forbid, they have cancer if they have a problem there. And then when I reassure them they don't have cancer, but then they're sort of like, well, you got to fix it. It's mm -hmm. something. And really, we have to get to the root of what the problem is first. But um, so there are all sorts of, of, of components to, to the sexual response. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot more complicated than one would, one would, uh, you know, think, yeah. but, but despite that, there are unique treatments for each and every condition. Well, you know, since you mentioned that, that, that someone might perceive that there's something wrong with them, a man might perceive, or even a woman might perceive that there's something wrong with a man if he's not ejaculating a lot. Do you necessarily believe that that is something that's wrong? Um, you know, can someone be healthy and otherwise the other three areas, the, the three areas altogether uh, are working with the exception of, of the extent of ejaculation? Does that inherently absolutely. mean that there's a problem? No, absolutely. Your, your, your inference is correct. It does not mean there's a problem. Uh, there can be a decline with age. There can be a decline because of medication. There could be a decline because of uh, surgery and so forth for this by the same token um once in a while i see a man comes in because he, he's they saw blood in the semen mm. and that, that is, is a little concerning but it's there's a panic but 99 out of well not at least nine out of ten times there is no a explanation we call it idiopathic which is our big word for saying we have no goddamn idea what happened but it happened <laughs> but but it's usually not uh, a problem. It's usually not simple. The first thing anyone thinks, like, blood means cancer in most people's minds. That's it. I'm, I'm finished, you know. But, um, again, it's not, uh, it's not that way. The same with blood in the urine. You know, it should be evaluated. But most times, most often, it's not the worst thing. So, uh, you know, everything's worth checking out. People are becoming much more health conscious these days. Uh, but never assume the worst. Uh, that, that's I've learned that a long time ago. Yeah. Well, I'm sure as a doctor, you know, not assuming the worst because you're so knowledgeable about these areas, and, and of course about the body in general, it's probably a little easier for you than some of us lay people because you know I see blood coming out where it's not usually supposed to be coming out. I might I might get a little scared. Well, it's also uh, easier for me because it's someone else's blood. <laughs> but I, didn't, I didn't say if it was mine, I'd be so kind. <laughs> Very good point. Very good point. And I do mm. want to acknowledge that uh, Dr. Carla Cook noted that uh, the cultural differences are interesting. And I find them interesting as well. I mean, uh, you know, we, we, we oftentimes shy away from having conversations about differences between cultures, differences between genders, differences between ages. We really don't like to go there uh, oftentimes because people perceive that as a negative, like you're implying something um, pejorative about a culture. But I really think it's fascinating that, um, you know, the way that we all came into this world and the, the belief systems that were established in our in our country of origin, our family of origin can oftentimes influence the way that people will look at everything, including how and when and in what ways to have sex. So. Um, very good point, Dr. Cook. Thank you for noting that. Um, so you used your prop earlier, okay? I did not know that the prop of Viagra was going to make it onto our show, uh, but since you brought it up, I wanna ask you about it. So the little blue pill, you know, it kind of revolutionized the way in which we as a society started thinking about addressing the issue of erectile dysfunction. And even as, as as common as as the movie and the and the television show Sex and the Siri, C City, it became, you know, a, a pop icon in and of itself. This little mm -hmm. blue pill that was making people have um, much greater access to sexual activity when they may not otherwise believe that they could again. And so, if a partner takes Viagra, the husband, we're going to say, uh, if he takes Viagra and it doesn't work. Um, what other options are there out there to treat erectile dysfunction if Viagra is not the magic pill that it's kind of made out to be? Well, 
it isn't the magic pill. It's a great pill, but there are plenty of guys that it doesn't work for. Now, there are three other pills on the market. There, uh, You probably heard of Cialis. Uh, there is, uh, yes, it's Levitra. all over the 6 o'clock news, Cialis. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, Le and Levitra and Stendra and, Sta uh, Stendra and um, Staxon. So there are, but they're all in the same family. So it's likely if one doesn't work, it's not guaranteed they're different molecules, but mostly if one doesn't work at all, it's unlikely the others will work. So what, what else is there out there? Well, there is injection therapy. If you've ever heard these commercials for the Boston Medical Group all over the radio, they're constantly advertising. It's a very old therapy they're advertising, and they're charging $3,000 to do something that you can come in and just have an office visit with me, and I'll teach you and save yourself three grand. And that is using medications to give a tiny little injection right in the side of the penis, and uh, in, within about five minutes, you get a rigid erection. It works for 90% of men. Uh, so you want them to come into your office so they can get a shot to get an erection right then and there? I teach them. <laughs> I no, well, a room in your office so that they can you know go deal. We with have them. we have a, we have a little subdued lighting, a little uh, mood music, you know. But no, we, we, well, we have. To, we, I'm telling you. Uh, no, we teach them how to administer the injection to themselves. And uh, and I adjust the dose. I don't want to give them such a, a dose that's so great that they're going to have that famous four-hour erection, you know. Uh, I remember I was in uh, Las Vegas. I was sitting right at the front of a comedy show, and the fellow from uh, Ray Romano, that show, um, uh, his Everybody brother. Everybody loves Ray, yeah. Right. So his brother, the cop, the big, huge guy, he has a comedy place in the MGM, and I was sitting in the first row. And when he learned that I was a urologist, I became the center of his show. So he said to me, hey, hey Doc, uh, what do you tell your patients when they get a four-hour erection? So I looked at him. I said, I tell them Mazel Tov. Well, the whole place was <laughs> laughing, and that was, that was the end of it. But um, So these injections, I have to titrate the dose. I don't want to give them... You know, most people think, wow, four-hour erection, believe me. If you're the guy and it's already after three hours, you want that thing to go down. So I, <laughs> sure. I, try, I try to give them the appropriate dose so that they have, you know, a nice erection that they're happy with. It doesn't become painful, but I have to – and I, I want to make sure they don't – their blood pressure doesn't change from it. So that's why I teach them how in the office. So that's number two. Number three – there are vacuum pumps. Again, these aren't very spontaneous, you know. Hey, honey, let, uh, you know, you, you're with a woman for the first time, and it leads to the bedroom, and then you have to take out this, you know, plastic pump and, you know, pump it up and put a rubber band around the base of the penis. But it is a treatment. Um, there are the shock, the shock wave therapy. Um, it's called Gaines Wave, and I was the first in New Jersey. And it's this treatment we basically – gives these shock waves along the penis. The penis is numbed up so it's not painful. It sounds like a, a jackhammer, but it really it's not painful at all. And that's very effective uh, treatment. There's the P-shot, which is injecting the platelet-rich plasma. There's stem cell injection. And then if all else fails, you can implant a penile prosthesis where they have a little a little pump uh, in their scrotum next to it. It's like a third testicle. And when they're ready, you know, they pump it up and away they go. Uh, but there, there, there are quite a few uh, uh, therapies, if you will. Um, many men use the, the medications. And, you know, Viagra, when it came out, it was $10 a pill. <laughs> Believe it or not, if you go into a pharmacy now and you pay cash, it's $80 a pill. And they look at me and I said, wow. first of all, I'm not, I'm not the pharmacist. That kind of happened know. in reverse, right? Usually, you know, the price of medication goes down. What, what yeah. caused that kind of precipitous? Oh. I think we've had a trend, unfortunately, in this country where medications have gotten more expensive, and that's been a big topic. But the good news is that the patent, the 17-year patent on Viagra expired, and so now there is generic sildenafil, which is the same medication. And even though, and I don't know who's buying the brand name for $80, <laughs> I, 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 I give patients a prescription. We have a mail order place to get 90 pills for 55 bucks. So they're paying 40 cents a pill. All right. So I'm sure people want you to drop that website link <laughs> to the conference before. Oh, the they, have to, they have to come in to get that information. <laughs> <laughs> That's that secret top, that top notch information. That's, um, oh, yeah. That's, um, yeah. So the, so the medications are, they're affordable now. I mean, quite honestly, when it was that expensive and Medicare never covered Viagra. Mm -hmm. 
So when you have a retiree on Social Security, they, I, I was always grateful that they gave us samples, but now they don't give samples anymore because it's gone off patent. Mm -hmm. There's a generic, but at least they can buy it really cheaply because it was really unfair to these uh, people on fixed incomes. Yeah, I mean, and that's really, you know, when you think about it, I'm sure that Dr. Cook would agree with this. It's not just a physical health issue. It's also a mental health issue. And as people advance into their later years, as, as they are approaching uh, retirement, now people are retiring later in life. But, you know, it still is something that you want them to have a healthy life. And part of having a healthy life, if you're in a relationship or even not, is to have a healthy sex life. So, um being denied access to drugs, I'm sure, was a problem that um, that you not only had a personal interest in helping to solve, but uh, for your patients would want them to to be able to secure that type of assistance. I have a 90 year old man that uh, fills his Viagra, and God bless him. He he's been <laughs> he's been he's been married 60 65 years, and they're still sexually active. Well, good for but, them. Uh, you know, so so it's uh, with with lifespan increasing, longevity increasing, and people becoming more tuned to their health and, you know, treating their, 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 uh, taking their fish oils and taking their vitamins and, and their coenzyme Q and all this other stuff. People are living longer and staying in better shape and maintaining their sexual function. So I think it's, you know, uh, one thing, again, it's better sex life, longevity. I think seem to be tied together. Absolutely. So um, we are coming toward the end of our hour. So I want to remind anyone that's just stopping in that you are watching Moving Families Forward with Williams Law Group. I'm Allison Williams, the owner and founder of Williams Law Group. Please do like, uh, comment and share the live so that other people can get the great information that's being shared by tonight's guest, Dr. Ron Israeli, a board certified urologist with a specialty in urologic oncology. Uh, trained and uh, educated by Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. So I want to turn now to something that I think uh, is a very sensitive topic, literally and figuratively, because we've talked a lot about men and, and men's uh, physical health and how you can help, but I know that you also help women. And one thing that I know is a very delicate topic is the idea of vaginal dryness and pain during intercourse. So when someone comes into you and, and reports that, whether they report that with or without their partner, if there's sex avoidance that's causing a rift in the relationship, what do you do to help address that particular physical problem so that the partners can have um, their, their healthy sex life restored? Well, a lot depends A, on the age of the patient and uh and what is the underlying reason for the dryness most of the women that do complain of this they are perimenopausal that's the most common or postmenopausal so women in their 40s 50s 60s this is the most common age group and so there's usually a hormonal uh, component involved but there can be thyroid dysfunction that can lead to it as well uh, the treatment can be from as simple as lubricants your run-of-the-mill lubricants to estrogen creams, which are very good at re revitalizing vaginal tissue, making it more healthy, uh, to um, correcting the hormone imbalance if there is one in the body, to uh, performing, uh, there are procedures. Uh, we'll be uh, starting soon using a uh, device called Thermiva, which is, uh, Thermi is the, from the Latin for heat, and VA for vagina, Thermiva is the uh, manufacturer's name for the device. And it's a radio frequency device. This tiny little uh, probe is put into the vagina and it heats uh, using radio frequency energy, heats and warms the tissue, stimulates collagen synthesis. It helps with uh, tightening the, the vagina. It helps with uh, increasing lubrication and it stimulates the glands. And it also helps at the same time tightening certain areas that uh, lead to an improvement in uh, leakage, women that cough and sneeze and lose some urine. So that's a treatment that's available too. So um, all these treatments, as well as uh, this new pill for um, female sexual dysfunction, uh, uh, flibanserin. So there are, again, a lot of treatments, but the simplest being lubrication. Just don't rough it and try to, you know, skip the steps because it's going to hurt. Yeah. And uh, no woman, I mean, that's that's very painful for a woman. And uh, the O-Shot, the so-called O-Shot using platelet-rich plasma is an amazing way of 
re revitalizing and re rejuvenating the vagina and uh, leads to improved um, lubrication and so forth. So there are lots of different ways to address the problem. So in talking about how you address that particular problem, when, when a woman presents to you and, and reports that she's suffering with vaginal dryness and it's affecting her sex life, are you seeing that more in postmenopausal women? Are you seeing it in younger women? And does that cue you as, as a potential problem for something more serious if it's in a younger woman who you wouldn't normally expect it to occur? Um, it's usually not a more serious problem, but again, it's far more common in your, in your uh, late 30s and up group. Uh, when it's younger, um, uh, again, it's very, it's really infrequent in, in, in younger, but it, it can happen, certainly. It, it leads to a different thought process as to what might be going on. You're, you're far less likely to turn up a, a major hormone situation in, in, a, in a really young person as you would in an older person. You're probably much more likely also to see thyroid dysfunction, although that happens at any age. But nonetheless, we do, this, we do the comprehensive workup on, on both. Gotcha. So um, before we end our show tonight, because we're coming to the to the top of the hour, I want to talk to you about your Medispa. So I just I think that this is uh, I was very uh, intrigued when I heard that this is something else that you offer, because, you know, many medical professionals, you become you become the expert of your craft and you kind of stay in your lane. And you've expanded into a whole additional area of service that really can help people in terms of how they uh, deal with their sexuality, but also how they deal with uh, life in general. So talk to us about Ahava. Well, we're a full service Medispa. I guess being a urologist, you know, uh, cardiologists do a lot of their work above the waist and I do most of mine below the waist. I guess I got sort of said to myself, boy, uh, you know, a lot of these people wouldn't, would really benefit if I bought a really good laser and they went and got themselves lasered and didn't have as much hair and it's <laughs> boy i tell you we got about 60 or, or more women a week coming in to have brazilians and bikinis and underarms and legs and men too lots of men do bodybuilding don't want to have a big hairy back and so forth but you know uh the same thing with botox i started using botox as a urologist because botox helps to treat overactive bladder and incontinence you inject it into the wall of the bladder and it deadens the muscles, the nerves, and they no longer have an overactive bladder. And this is for people that medications didn't work. And I say, look, if I can inject it in the bladder, I can certainly learn and take courses and figure out how to get rid of a few wrinkles. And this led to another thing. And all of a sudden, you know, we're doing cool sculpting and making people freezing their fat and we're doing facelifts using threads and we're doing uh, all therapy to give neck and facelifts. And, the, 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 real, um, the real common thread is both urology, especially treating male and female sexual dysfunction, hormone dysfunction, and the field of aesthetics of beauty, they're geared towards making people really happy and immediate gratification. I spent the first 20 years of my life treating major cancers and doing 10-hour operations, you know, and making rounds every day and having to tell more than a few people. I mean, uh, I, I cured thousands, but there are many people that I had to tell that, you know, this is not good and I can do a lot of things, but I'm not God. And it, the end is not going to be, is not going to be great. Mm -hmm. Well, with cosmetics, I don't have to do that with urology. I don't have, you know, general urology. Uh, I still do treat cancer, but I think part of this has been therapy for me to make, to, to do a little bit lighter, form of medicine and to make people happy. So um, it's a double-edged sword. It helps me and helps everybody else too. So it is fun. Yeah. It's a lot of fun to be, it's not as critical. It's not life and death to take away someone's crow's feet, but it sure makes them feel good. And you know, you just got divorced. You want to come in, you want to look your best. You put your picture up on match.com. Of course, it's your boss mitzvah picture. It's not from this decade. Or the <laughs> But you so say, you, you know, come in and I'll make you look like that old picture, you know, but uh, <laughs> it's fun. So that's that's where we're at. Yeah. Well, Dr. Israeli, we joke about this, but, you know, we really are committed to helping heal the person when they come through our office. And 
getting them into the hands of somebody that can make them feel better about their exterior while they're working on their interior and rebuilding their emotional self as well as their physical self and their finances after divorce is absolutely something that we're committed to. So we're so happy that you were here with us tonight. Dr. Israeli, thank you so much for being here. And for anyone that really wants to know how to get a hold of you, if they want to come to the Medi Spa or if they have any of the issues that we've been talking about and they need a good urologist, how do they get a hold of you? Well, my name is Rayleigh, really is easy to remember, Israel with an I at the end. We're in Livingston, New Jersey, Ahava Medispa, and uh, my medical practice in the same uh, same suite but different wings. Um, yeah, I could give you my number, but everyone will forget it. So just Dr. Ron Israeli, Livingston, New Jersey, and uh, we're there every day. We will put your URL into the comments so that people can get a hold of you if they want to. And I want to thank everybody who came in tonight and watched the uh, live with us. We were talking to Dr. Ron Israeli, who is a board certified urologist with a specialty in urologic cancer oncology. Uh, and he is also the owner of Ahava, which is a Medi Spa. And the issues that we've been talking about really surrounded sexuality. And we kind of had some jokes in there. But the reality is having a healthy sex life is important to relationships. It's also healthy to your own mental and emotional health. So we're very happy that we had the great information shared with us by Dr. Israeli. I want to thank everyone for watching tonight. Moving Families Forward will be here again next Monday at 7 o'clock. Please have a wonderful, wonderful week.